Hello, this is Fabio from Rhyme Down. It's an Italy heavy metal band, and uh, he is guitarist. He can talk about the band, and we're gonna talk about his whole music career and all these long years of heavy metal music. Hello, Marcus. I'm very happy to to stay here with you for this interview. Oh, thank you for accepting this. It's very very interesting. Talk about some stuff to know more about Rhyme Down. I don't know if you know this, but I've been a fan of Rhyme Down. I've listened to the, these albums. I even got The Lord of the Skies as my favorite song and other songs that I like as well. But uh, to start this conversation, I've been starting the latest episodes with one question that uh, for most of the people, it's not the... Uh, not such a positive question because uh, we've been through different times, especially for musicians, for people that are in the music business, in events and stuff. So how has been the latest year for you, 2020, and this early month of 2021? Yes, uh, we are preparing the new album. We passed the last, year, last two years, in reality, to preparing uh, new stuff because uh, Enaid was out in seven years ago, so it was a very long period. So it's, uh, it's now it's time to, to do some new stuff, to publish uh, new things. We have uh, 10 uh, songs. We, we recorded these 10 songs in the last uh, year, last two years in reality. Uh, fortunately, many things were recorded before the COVID. So uh, now the situation is a little bit more uh, difficult, but uh, we are well organized at home, so we can uh, we can uh, continue uh, continue our uh, job at home. For example, uh, the the singer is not uh, from our city, and he uh, he he is recording uh, at home because he has a little studio. Uh, we are preparing, we, are pre we have uh, recorded everything in my studio because I have a studio, Sonic Temple. Uh, so now uh, we need just to, uh, to finish uh, a couple of songs, uh, the, the vocal part. And then uh, in March, uh, I want to finish the album. Uh, I already started with mixing uh, projects. We have done already a promo for, uh, for the labels with five songs uh, to, to get a good uh, record deal. Uh, and so the, the idea was to publish uh, the album uh, for the summer or uh, after the summer. I don't know, because uh, today for the pandemic, the situation is uh, slow. It goes slow, the, so, and uh, together we, uh, we are real busy also in our life. I have work, I have studio. Uh, every one of us uh, has uh, something also uh, beyond the band, so time is slow for us <laughs> to keep. Uh, but okay, we now we are ready. In a couple of months, uh, we want to finish the album and uh, publish it uh, for the for the summer or after the summer. We'll see. We'll see. Now I stopped the, the mixing pro, uh, process because uh, I was uh, really busy. I've been re uh, really busy with uh, with the studio. I just finished the, the mixing process of the new album of Ian Perry. I don't I don't know if you know him. Ex Elegy. Uh, it's a, it was a famous band. Uh, Ian Perry, really nice uh, singer. And uh, so in March, uh, I start again with Hemdan. Oh, that, that's good news. So mostly in this very uh, uh, different year, you, you started a new album. From what you told, it's like missing the vocals and some stuff, but the mixing. No, just two songs. Uh, oh, two songs. So, so, so most so of I the have... album is done. Yes, yes, 10 songs, uh, we are ready, we are ready to go. Uh, this is interesting, uh, when, when the album is out, I want to hear it, and of course I'm going to share it on my page and stuff. Great, thank you. I hope uh, you, you like it. <laughs> ah, I hope I will too. Uh, based on the other albums, I'm sure going to like it. 
Yes, yes. Uh, I, I, well, because it's really nice. <laughs> it's really <laughs> we have re we we had time to <laughs> to write uh, the new songs, and we are very happy about the result. Yeah, I hope I can hear it soon. Uh, I'm gonna. I would like to talk now about the very beginning, the very start of Rhyme Down, which which is a cool name, in fact, Rhyme Down. Yeah. It's like no, a, the Northern no. mythology, you know. Uh, I would like to talk about the how the band was formed and how did you started it. Yes, uh, I started uh, to play guitar in uh, I don't remember the year, but uh, I was uh, <laughs> 15 years old, and uh, uh, I started with a black metal band from Depths. I found uh, together my brother a black metal band. And uh, okay, we we were in the scene. I'm talking about uh, 1990. <laughs> I don't remember <laughs> 1990, maybe maybe 1990 from Depths. And uh, but okay, I I always loved heavy metal, classic heavy metal. Uh, Judas Priest is my one of my favorite band. Uh, okay, Savatage. Uh, so uh, I decided to, uh, together my brother to found a heavy metal band, uh, and we started uh, in uh, 1994. Uh, after some change of lineup, uh, we uh, we build a good lineup, uh, and uh, we we produced our first promo in 1997. And after a week, we had a deal. So 1994, the band was formed with your brother. What instrument your brother play? Yeah, uh, my brother played drums. It's oh, actually so he, a, a Heimdall drummer. You, you have a, a drummer, you're a guitarist yourself, so you had to find either another guitar, a bassist, and a vocalist. Yes, yes. We, we started, me and my brother, with uh, another guitar player. At the beginning, uh, I was at voice, but okay. <laughs> it was just for the beginning. <laughs> after uh, after a, one year, we we have together Carmelo Clubs, that is actually our uh, solo guitar player, and Giovanni Cano, that was the first uh, best player, uh, bass player, and he stayed for the first four album, uh, and five album because he played also in uh, in eight. Uh, about the vocals, uh, we uh, we found Claudio in 1996, if I remember well. Claudio Gallo, that was the singer of the, our first two albums, Lord of the Sky and the Temple of Tail. Uh, and then, okay, we saw in 1995, uh, we, we had the, uh, the lineup that, uh, that, uh, that is the lineup of Lord of the Sky. And in 1997, uh, after three years uh, from the beginning, uh, we recorded a cassetta. Do you know cassetta? You yeah, are young. The, the, it's a record tape. It's the old record tape, right? Yeah, I, I, I got some from that era. I'm yes. the more from the CDs era, but yes, I had some of these. Yes, yes. The, in, in that time, the promo was on cassetta usually. Uh, so we we started to to send some uh, to some label uh, this uh, this promo, but we we get uh, soon a record deal with Elevate Records. It was our first label for the first two albums, and so in 1998 uh, we we entered the studio in Roma, uh, and we published the Lord of the Sky. So. The story start <laughs> started in that year. The, the Lord of the Sky is like my favorite album from all those I've heard. I feel it's very, uh, it's like these melodic vocals, but all these uh, heavy rhythms from the guitars and all this, the drum beating in very, very loudly. It's very interesting stuff. Yes, thank you. Yes, because um, uh, I like uh, not only heavy metal, uh, classic heavy metal, but uh, thrash metal, uh, as I told you, extreme metal. So all these influences uh, were in that album. Consider that it's the first album. So uh, 
we uh, recorded the songs of the of this album from 1994 to 1997 so you have uh, really many uh, many imprints in that album because uh, three years from the beginning with uh, changes of lineup uh, you have a uh, really a variety in that album uh, maybe one of the the main point of this uh, of this record uh, Lord of the Sky is uh, maybe, no, maybe it's our uh, best success till now. We we sold in 1998 uh, something like 15 uh, copy, 15,000 copies. That uh, that, uh, however, it's a um, it's a good uh, it's a good uh, number because also because in that year, uh, uh, internet started uh, so. Copies. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's always uh, difficult to send uh, to sell uh, a large number of copies, but uh, Lord of the Sky was really uh, a good a good success for us. And uh, after that album, uh, we go in tour uh, together with Labyrinth. Uh, it was a great uh, great time. Uh, talking about Lord of the Skies, can, can you describe more for me, can you tell more the details of how this album was recorded or if you have anything interesting that you tell? You can go deep into uh, the technical details if you want to. I love this kind of stuff, so if you want to dig in that, I'll be very good to hear. Yeah, uh, Lord of the Sky was recorded in a studio in Rome uh that was uh, found by the label uh, the recording process uh, la uh, lasted uh, one month more or less 20 no marland yes uh, including the mixing uh, process so we stayed uh, one month at rome more or less and uh all right drums and bass uh, was really fast recording uh, just a couple of days if i if i remember uh, guitars was a, re a really little bit more uh, slow process because we, uh, at the time, uh, uh, we want to experiment some different sounds. Uh, we we tested some different uh, amplifier. Now I don't remember exactly. I remember surely a Soldano, preamp Soldano, and maybe something from Mesa. But okay, now I don't remember exactly. <laughs> what mesa, we... mesa bogey, you mean? The, the ampli Mesa bogey? Yeah. Mesa bogey. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, a final, uh, if I remember, from Mesa bogey. And uh, okay, we, as as you hear, the Lord of the Sky is full of solos, uh, full of uh, arrangements uh, for, for guitar. So, the guitar part was uh, was really complex in that album uh, and also about the vocals uh, so many many keys because uh, at the time we we didn't have a, a keyboard player uh, the keys on the album were recorded uh, from by Carmelo Claps that is uh, the actual solo player and uh, and okay after uh, this time we we had a, mix, a week uh, for the mix for the mixing and the mastering uh, process. So you play the rhythm guitar? Yes, I played in I, I'm uh, above all a uh, rhythm player and I'm uh, the, the main composer of the songs uh, from uh, from Emdal. In the first album also some uh, some solos, but then we uh, divided a little bit the our uh, our aims in the band. So uh, I uh, follow more the rhythm part because uh, when you record uh, some uh, some album and you have two gui guitarist player, uh, if the rhythm part are similar or so on, uh, it's better that just one person play every every guitar parts, every rhythm and guitar parts. So the synchronization is better, and uh, and so I. <clears throat> We we prefer to to record in this way. I follow all the rhythm part uh, and the Carmelo the solos part. Boy, Carmelo is re a really good player, uh, better than me. So <laughs> so I prefer that uh, that he follow the solos part, <laughs> and then I. This is very interesting. Uh, I'd like to dig on that because I just 
got a real good lesson, I can say. So for the riffing parts, you like uh, have two guitars playing the riffings, for instance, and you say the same person record both. One player with uh, one or two guitars, it depends. depends. Oh. Usually it's better to have uh, two slightly different sounds from left and right, so you have a more uh, bigger sound. More oh, sound. I can see it. Th this is... it's, better that, uh, it's better that one person play because uh, you can uh, synchronize better the, the two guitars, the riffing, the riffing parts. No? You are 100% right. If you have uh, uh, really different uh, rhythm parts, okay. You have two, two players, it's, it's okay that they play, uh, each, each one play his part. But if the riffing is similar or slightly different, uh, it's better that one person uh, uh, play that uh, these two, these two parts, these two riffing. I see now. It's it's very to interesting be, to know that you have to be tight when you when you record the two guitars or four guitars. Uh, it depends. You have to be really tight, you know. So, and uh, with this method, we we really we go well with this method because each one has its uh, aims. <laughs> Today we, uh, we see for it like that. So for the this is a nice pro tip out there for whoever will be listening to this. So recording guitars with similar parts on the rhythm, you get the same person doing it because it will be easier to do it right. Uh, I, I can tell this this is was shocking and good news for me because recently I'm doing a cover song with uh, two other people, two guitarists. I'm playing bass. And I, I was doing the mix, uh, putting those guitars together, and I had, I had two rhythm guitars playing the same notes, but, uh, you know, there's supposed to be very tight stuff playing there, and there was like this micro difference where you, you, you would hear this difference, you know, uh, it's like it was out of time and out of stuff, and you had to yes, put yes. them together. Yes, it's not right, it's, uh, but, but many bands uh, doing this way. Then... Uh, I repeat, uh, it's, uh, it depends also on the, on the riffing types. It depends, because if two guitarists uh, play different, completely different parts, but uh, in, uh, that are good uh, together, okay, each one uh, plays its part. But uh, the main riff, if it's uh, the, idea, the idea when uh, you play uh, Judas Priest riff, for example, is to have power, to have impact. So you, you have to be tight. And uh, it's it's the same with our music. We want to to have an impact. Uh, we have uh, a lot of solos parts or melodies, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But when uh, riff uh, is playing, uh, you have to be <laughs> you have to be strong, like a train. By by doing this, you you actually uh, sum the two guitar parts and make the sound more flat. I I, I could say that, right? Ah, usually we we record uh, with uh, two different sounds, one for left and one for right. For example, in in in, uh, in aid, uh, we play four guitar, but just in the choruses, just in the in the main part of the song. It depends. It depends. Uh, in the many uh, music style, uh, you can also record four guitars. Uh, you have to be tight. You have to be precise. Really, really precise. But for uh, power metal stuff, heavy metal stuff, uh, two guitars are uh, okay for me. Uh, depends, because I think, for example, in an aid, we had uh, many courses with long uh, uh, power chords. So four guitar was, uh, uh, was a better uh, impact. Depends, depends on the album, depends on the song. Uh, two, two guitars uh, for me, it's okay now. Two different sound, one for the left and one for the right. Two different guitar, depend, it depends. There is no rule. Uh, you go in studio and, uh, and try to do the best. I usually, uh, for example, now that I record in my studio, I have uh, one speaker that is a Mezabuki speaker, and then I have uh, two heads. One is uh, Ibu H and one is uh, Angle or Mezabuki, depends on the 
the present sound. So we sum these two different uh, two different sounds with the same guitars or different guitars. Uh, then uh, this depends on the song, it depends on the moment, also on the moment. But it's important to have uh, two slightly different sounds, to have a more wider uh, wider sounds at uh, at the end. It's the same with the, the plugin uh, amp sim. I don't know if you sometimes use a plugin. Uh, uh, yeah, I do. I do. Yeah, you do. It's a good way. It's a good uh, stuff to change uh, the speaker. For example, you have the same uh, head. For, uh, now I'm talking about plugin. In anal analog world, uh, you have two heads. It's better. But for example, if you use just one plugin change the speaker you have two sides and you change one left you put a speaker uh, on the right you put another speaker i, I don't know if you understand what uh, what i mean yeah 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 i i, I do this interesting <laughs> i'm gonna wrote, note this down <laughs> <laughs> uh, <I must. laughs> send me your material <laughs> <laughs> And I, I got some suggestions for you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Very interesting. No, no, I appreciate that. I don't know if you are better than me, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. Of course not. I got much to learn. Uh, I would like to talk about uh, your composing uh, parts of this stuff. It means you you, you compose the songs, but uh, I'd like to know uh, how do you start your composing process? Uh, is that a method, a technique? And then if you can extend this, if you could talk a bit, uh, which is the first instrument you record and why? Yes, uh, uh, no, there is no method, uh, but okay. The main song uh, were born uh, from my guitar, I play guitars. Many of the Hemdal band, uh, many of the Hemdal songs uh, were born uh, from my acoustic guitars. Just I was on the, I was uh, here, and I play idea, and I now I record directly. Before it was different. Before when I had uh, an idea, I record uh, on a telephone, for example. Uh, I play and record with telephone and then uh, in a rehearsal uh, room with my brother. Oh, we can try these, we can try these. Some other songs uh, were born uh, in the rehearsal room directly, playing uh, with the band, uh, with my brother. Oh, I have a riff. Uh, try this, try this melody. Or uh, other times uh, when I'm doing, uh, I don't know, I'm doing some, uh, some uh, other things, uh, I... I think about a melody and I record on the telephone right now. For example, yesterday I was with, with my son. Uh, oh, just a moment. Uh, I have an idea. <laughs> I have to record on my, on my, <laughs> my son look at me in this way. Why, father? <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> I have <to> a minute. <laughs> So you you don't have a, you don't have a meter, okay? Now with computer, uh, I play. I have a little studio also at home, uh, so I have uh, some outboards here. I have my camper. I have plugins. Uh, I cannot have a head in uh, at home <laughs> because otherwise my neighbors <laughs> close. <laughs> oh, I put. Uh, in the night with my head, uh, <laughs> with my phones, I play guitar. Uh, okay, today with computers, uh, it's different. Uh, you can program drums, uh, you can uh, record an idea. So, oh, Nicholas, uh, uh, hear this song, hear this part. Uh, I have a mic for, uh, for the vocal parts, just to, to remember, just to, to give some lines uh, for the singer. Uh, today it's uh, it's it's different, but the uh, means of uh, in the song, as I told you, were born with my acoustic guitar, uh, just to just play, just play, and uh, oh, this uh, this idea is good, this idea is bad, uh, just recording on the telephone, the computer. Well, uh, it's this. There is no a method, uh, just uh, a moment, inspiration. Yeah, nowadays it's easier to just record stuff, you know, I got this audio card in there, just plug in the yeah. bass and you got a riff and you go in the program, wreck, and that is done. Yeah. Today it's uh, it's easy, okay, it's, uh, it's a good thing uh, for many of us because 
computer plugin uh, a really a great thing to do and then you consider that uh, okay before we uh, we went in rehearsal room two three we three times per week now it's impossible because everyone has a family work uh, so we can uh, we can uh, uh, see together one uh, one uh, time per week. Uh, okay, now with pandemic, it was impossible the same, but the average is one time per week before uh, two, three times. Uh, it's, uh, it was uh, different. So some starting in the rehearsal room. To do the recording during this pandemic time, did you people, I mean, the guys from the band, did you all record, the, I mean, each in your home, like a Rome studio stuff, and they would send to you something, or they would have to come into your house to actually record the stuff? No, 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 we, we are uh, well organized. Each one has a his way to record uh, music. Uh, okay, drums were did in the studio, of course. But uh, for example, I played bass and I and I did at home uh, with the eye bass uh, because I I played bass uh, for this album and uh, gui uh, guitar the same uh, main guitar was uh, was done uh, at home but because uh, I I recorded the uh, the eye and then in the studio we can reamp it so. But the, the recording part uh, was done uh, at home, the most of them. But it's, uh, it's, uh, it's easy for, uh, for, uh, for everyone. So when you go to studio, you can reamp, uh, you, uh, you can try more amplifiers, uh, you, can, uh, you have the clean part and you can, uh, you can reamp through real uh, amplifiers. But, uh, this method uh, now it's uh, it's good for uh, for everyone, uh, pandemic or not. Uh, uh, many of our uh, jobs is uh, is done at home. For example, our singer uh, have because it's not from the same um, city. Uh, he recorded uh, his part at home. He has a little studio, not at home. Eh? Okay, he has a little studio. He's a little studio where he, he can record his uh, materials. Interesting. Uh, so you, the guitars you're speaking, it's recorded clean, and then you in the studio you test the whole setup of effects and the stuff. Yes, you can. It's a good thing that you can stay one day just to understand the sound. <laughs> for example, you you don't lose time for the performance. You can do at home because, uh, as I told you, I have good uh, converters, I have good preamp, so I can do at home with my phones. Uh, I can uh, I can do everything in a perfect way without. Uh, I have a family, so I cannot stay uh, in the studio because the studio is not near. I cannot stay in the studio uh, until uh, three in the night as I did before. <laughs> Now it's impossible, so I prefer to stay at home with <laughs> with my phones uh, until uh, three o'clock in the night uh, to play <laughs> and to adjust everything to see oh it's better it's not better. Oh, it's a it's a good uh, it's a good system for us. Uh, do you listen to other kinds of music uh, outside of rock and roll, heavy metal, and does this influences you into your own music? Uh, honestly, in that moment, uh, no. Uh, when I was younger, uh, I loved uh, also some other kinds of music, like Celtic music, some uh, classical stuff. But uh, now that I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm getting older and older, <laughs> I'm becoming older and older, no, just uh, rock, just metal. Uh, even... Uh, even because uh, I have a recording studio, as I told you, so many stuff that I hear at home it's from my studio. <laughs> it's for uh, it's for job. Uh, so now, just uh, classic uh, classic metal I like very much, uh, or hard rock. Uh, also, 
something uh, from uh, melodic rock i like it uh, or modern rock uh, but always uh, in the in the field of rock uh, i don't know why but <laughs> it's like this i love uh, this kind of music me too uh, looking looking back in those all these years of rhyme down what can you tell me that would be like uh, As, uh, aside from the launching of the Lord of the Skies and its uh, numbers and stuff, but uh, counting shows and moments, what would be the biggest moments from the band? You can name more than number one. Fast. Uh, okay, Lord of the Sky was surely the first big uh, moment for the band. Uh, because it uh, gave uh, the opportunity to to go in tour uh, to play in uh, different uh, different places uh, tempo t was also a really good uh, album a really good uh, success for the band after that we had uh, a couple of years that we changed the singer it was a little bit um, difficult uh, difficult moment but uh, we okay we went back with another sing, uh, singer Giacomo and uh, we published uh, the almighty that was our third record uh, and also the almighty was a good album also because uh, we we had the the opportunity to to open for important band like shaman i told you before uh, we took part to some uh, important festivals here in italy we played with a big band like uh, uh, destruction uh, i don't know if you, if you know a german uh, german band and uh, so it was a uh, uh, the festival maybe were, was a very important uh, part of our uh, of our story in that uh, in that moment because uh, they are a fantastic uh, experience for the band to, to play together other important uh, really important band uh, it's a, it's really interesting and uh, and a great experience for us uh, now we are playing a little bit less live uh, as i told you many many some <laughs> any problems <laughs> uh, family work uh, and so on so we see we see in the future we see in the future Okay, another great moment uh, was uh, from the time of Lord of the Sky when we uh, when we we were in the in the five in the fifth position uh, in the chart of uh, Burn. I don't know if you know. It's a very it was I don't know if now it is it was a very important uh, Japanese uh, magazine, really big really big Japanese uh, Japanese magazine. And the Lord of the Sky was a fifth uh, position in their chart, so it was a really great uh, news for us. We did also an interview, uh, and also for the second album. Uh, I remember uh, with uh, really pleasure this uh, this moment. Uh, did you have the chance to play outside Europe, or you just played in shows in Europe? No, no, no. In this period, no. No, no, this period, no, okay, there was a pandem pandemic, but we, 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 want, uh, we want to wait for the new album. We want to publish the new album. Now we are concentrated to, to, finish, uh, uh, to finish the new album. So after we see, we want to... I hope you can come to Brazil. Oh, it, was, it will be a dream. <laughs> I received many, many mails, many support also on the social from uh, Brazilian people, uh, from South America in general. Uh, and uh, and uh, I think that uh, will be one of the best places to, to play. <laughs> yeah, really. uh, there's a lot of people in here that really like it, into heavy metal stuff and, and yes, rock no, and roll I music. I know, no, also if I, if I see on the statistic on YouTube, uh, the statistics, statistics i can see that uh, our music is a uh, really uh, is really followed in the brazil uh, also in the north of europe uh, so it uh, it would be really a dream i don't know if <laughs> i hope <laughs> i hope for the future now we the album then <laughs> because uh, okay we 
in aid was uh, was out uh, seven years ago but we um, we did a video clip of another song three years ago uh, nights of riverland if you want to hear it is on our youtube channel uh, i'll check it out okay and so after three years we have to complete uh, the album uh, I'd like I'd like to ask you something different. I saw there is a guitar behind you. C yes. Can I see the guitar? Can you show it up? My favorite. Like <laughs> Son with MG. Oh, it's a flying V. Other flying V from Gibson. Oh, it's a Gibson. Oh, interesting. I have uh, five Gibson. I feel like, <laughs> like Gibson. That one is not bad. Not uh, important either, but it's a potential pickup, damage, active pickup. My favorite. My favorite is that Black Beauty. The, the, these Gibson's guitars, they, they always look these flat sounds and very heavy sounds. Uh, I think they fit perfect for like uh, heavy music and stuff. Yes, yes, big. <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh, the, this, this bass, it, it, it's a Fender. I don't know if you can see that. It's a Jaguar ah, bass. Oh. It's a Fender Jaguar. Ah, Fender Jaguar, yes. Ah, okay, I see. Yeah, I, I like this one mostly because you have all these options, passive, active, and the pickups, and it has a boost. You, you plug in the boost, and it's like a way of bass. You, you instantly get bass. Great, great. But I, I right. also got, got a Jackson, too. Uh, Jackson for, because I'm very fond of uh, Metallic and Megadeth, and in the 90s, Megadeth used a lot of Jacksons, and you really okay. got that, 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 that sound, you know? Yeah, no, I, know. I, I tried Jackson some years ago, really nice uh, guitar. Uh, now I'm thinking about to, to buy another guitar, but I don't know which. <laughs> you have to choose. Yeah, I, I'm very, very, very interesting in if the opportunity comes to get this, it's like the Gibson uh, Thunderbird bass, you know, this one, this is a cl classic one, this is very heavy stuff, I really want this one, but it's really hard to find in here. Oh, really? Yeah, you may find it, uh, use it, of course, but uh, in very expensive way. So you got to keep searching for a good opportunity. Like this Jackson I got in there, I got last year. It was a very nice opportunity and the bass was perfect, you know, not a scratch. Oh, great, great. You, you play also guitar, no? Just, just bass? No, right? no, no, just bass, yeah, yeah. I'm a terrible guitar player and I cannot do the chords and I get yeah. messed up and the... The, the flats, you know, uh, they are too tight and my fingers just keep on two of them. And I mess up totally. <laughs> not, not that I'm a good play, bass player either, but this is one thing I can try more. I can record here and there. Great, great. And okay, music is the best thing in the world, so. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. Uh, I would like uh, uh, us to finish with... Uh, I know we, you're really concentrating in finishing up the upcoming album, but if you can tell something more about the future and anything else you wish to tell, you may speak freely. No, okay, as I told you, we, we have to finish the album now. We hope to finish uh, for uh, in a couple of months, I hope. And uh, as I told you, we, we prepared a promo for the labels. We want to... We want to find a good record deal. Uh, this is the priority now. For the future, I don't know because uh, we have to we have to hope that this uh, pandemic finish uh, uh, before <laughs> it's uh, it's a really it's one one year now. So now it's impossible uh, to plan something. Uh, you don't know. Maybe for the summer. Maybe after the summer. Maybe uh, in one year. We we don't know. So it's uh, it's useless to program something now. 
we we took this time to finish the album uh, to to prepare everything in a good uh, in a good way for the future i don't know surely a video clip uh, after uh, this period we want to record uh, another video clip and uh, and we'll see oh, um, of course the the hope is to play live uh, to 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 go on tour uh, next year i think because uh, before uh, i think that it's impossible for the situation and uh, and we'll see we want to go on to play music we want to go on to record some new stuff uh, and so on consider that also i have a studio so i i can work in the studio so i'm uh, also also if i don't play with the band i can uh, i i have in contact with music uh, continuously uh, with other bands uh, and uh, and it's it's that we like we like music uh, we we like to to write songs we like to publish songs uh, uh, so we don't have particularly particularly uh, ideas for the future we want to go on uh, with these things with this stuff i would like you to thank you for coming this was a very very interesting opportunity not because i was just a fan of the music i am indeed a fan of the music fan of the albums i hope i can keep supporting and all this stuff but also because I'm really a fan of heavy metal and the, this brand, my brand, it, it, it's hard to get involved into heavy metal. It's mostly electronic music. Okay, I like both, but uh, I really want to bring in more heavy metal, more rock and roll stuff and be on these shows, record them. I, I, I do audiovisual stuff, maybe clips and all this related. And this is a very nice opportunity. The talking was excellent because I actually learned something, not, not just history of the band, I was hoping to hear more, but technical details and all that stuff. I thank you a lot. And I hope that the album is ready soon and I can hear it. I'm going to share it in all my medias and stuff. Thank you very much. Thank you for this opportunity, for this interview. It was a great pleasure for me to pass this hour, I don't know. Hour and a half, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, yes, after after the album, we can do another interview if you want. Uh, for me, it will be a, it will be a pleasure. So thank you to the to to the people that follow our music. Uh, uh, check out on our YouTube channels uh, to hear our music. Uh, you can find all the albums. For example, I put uh, all the albums on the on the YouTube channels. I, I don't. Uh, <clears throat> okay, and I don't know because okay, it uh, it was uh, our last album. It has a label, but I, my my main my main thing is that our music uh, uh, has to be for everyone. Uh, I, I don't. Uh, okay, so to sell copies is important for the band, etc., uh, etc. Et but uh, I want the, the first thing. Think that I want that my music uh, will be listened by more people uh, possible. So check out on uh, our YouTube channels. You can find uh, our first album complete, free. You can uh, you can hear them. Uh, you can hear our last uh, video clip. And uh, see you another time. I don't know. <laughs> I'll leave all the links in the description of the video and social media to people to check it out. Thank you. Great. Thank you.